Hello everyone, how's it going? Thanks for joining. My name's Hashem, you're watching another Pushing Film live stream. Welcome. Welcome to the first one, if this is your first one, and welcome back if you've seen these before. And this is a book sharing live stream. And in today's uh, edition, I'm gonna be sharing this book, which is Greg Gerard's J-A-L, or JAL, uh, 76 to 88, signifying the years 1976 to 1988, covered in uh, Japan, the photography he did in Japan. And uh, JAL being a reference to Japan Airlines is my assumption, at least. And uh, this is the most recent photo book that Sarah and I got. Uh, normally, I'm the one <laughs> addicted to buying photo books. But this one, we both had an interest in. We both pre-ordered a while ago when it was announced for pre-order early this year or maybe even late last year, I believe. So we put our name down as soon as we saw it uh, on his Instagram. And it finally arrived while we were away on holiday which was, uh, you know, during the early June period, I think. So yeah, brilliant book. I thought I'd share a little bit of it and uh, at least give you an idea if you're not familiar with Greg Gerard's work at all. So thanks for joining if you're here. Let me know if everything's working all right. It's been a while since I've gotten back into the rhythm of doing live streams. So <laughs> forgive me if things are a bit rusty and if I sound a bit nasally. Um, yeah, I have a bit of a cold, I'm assuming. It's not COVID. I did a rat. So if that's <laughs> honest and um, accurate, I don't have that. So yeah, I don't feel too bad though. It's just a bit congested and, um, you know, scratchy throat and whatever. But yeah, if you're not familiar with Greg Gerard's work, I have shared a bit about him on the channel before in the form of another book sharing live stream, which was about this book here under Vancouver. And actually, I don't know if I did this one live. I shared this as a... Um, a pre-recorded video on the channel. So either way, if you go back and search for Greg Gerard, you can see um, there's the title under Vancouver. You'll find the video I did on this book and uh, sharing some of this one, which is also a brilliant book, by the way, and uh, especially one for all you film photographers out there, which I know is a, a big sort of, um, I don't know, demographic, I guess is the word of people who watch this channel. But I know there's other photographers who are interested in... Uh, both film and digital, or maybe even just digital. But the beauty of this book is that it was all shot on film, obviously, because it is from uh, a time period pre-digital, being 72 to 82 for this one. And yeah, this latest book was Greg Gerard's newest release, JAL, Japan Airlines. And it's not about the airline, it's just a, a catchy title. So starting off with the book itself, it's a similar size to the other one. I think it's around um, eight by 11 or something like that inches. And it's got this beautiful front cover with one of the images of Japan, presumably Tokyo, and a back cover, which is sort of a continuation of the same image. And this really nice um, gold, what do you call it? Gold foil stamp or whatever that type of um, printing is, but it works really well, obviously with the color theme of the photo on the front and back cover, the green of those fluorescent lights at nighttime and the, the golden sort of um, tungsten lighting coming out from the big clock there and the car headlights and so on. So really nice cover and, and a great book. So I thought I would share it with you. Anyway, as you may know, if you've watched these before, the way I do these, and let's see if it's working because it's giving me a bit of trouble, is I try and share a bit of the book from this overhead view and it looks like it's working right for now and give you an idea. So this one, I think is a special edition. I can't remember because it was that long ago that we pre-ordered pre -ordered it and then it finally arrived and I had forgotten almost all about the book. And then we got the notification that it had arrived and I went to pick it up from the post office and it was... Yeah, just a pleasant surprise overall. And you can see the book opens up into this fold-out section with this graphic design that's reminiscent of the Japan Airlines logo. I'm not sure if it's the old logo. I know it's not the current one. Or I'm assuming it's more just a design that's inspired by that um, theme of travel and Japan Airlines and flight and discovery and the bird and, and so on. And then this image here of the two schoolgirls in black and white. And what you'll find is that the majority of this book is photos made on color slide film, which is a look I'm really a fan of. I talked about this a lot in uh, the coverage of Under Vancouver, which was also a lot of night photography. You'll find that Greg Gerard is really great at night photography, but also daytime black and white stuff as well. 
but it's a similar sort of aesthetic, I would say. Even though it's in a completely different country, these sort of quiet nighttime scenes of places that you wouldn't regularly visit, places that are down alleys or around corners and not so populated and just kind of off color locations and scenes and so on. And in this one, he lists all the different film stocks and you'll see it's a lot of slide film and black and white negative, but yeah, that creates this really unique look. A lot of people would call it kind of Blade Runner-ish. And I know that theme may come up when people are talking about this body of work and Greg Gerard's work in general, but yeah, that is the aesthetic that you could come to expect from the night photography by uh, Greg Gerard, who by the way, is a Canadian photographer and has signed this copy of the book. So I think if you buy a copy, you can, it will be signed as well, or you can request it to be signed, which is a really nice touch. So that um, opening page there, and then it just jump, jump straight into it. And this one kind of has this um, theme of, I guess, a motif of televisions and movie theaters and screens, and this sort of, uh, I guess, era that was blossoming in the, uh, 70s to 80s where Japan really started to become uh I guess how do you say it like not necessarily westernized but influenced by the by the west and by the media and kind of that commercialism and their um strengthening economy and growing the country and cities and uh the story behind it is that Greg Gerard visited Japan and Tokyo for what was intended to be just a couple of days and ended up just loving it and staying there for, for years, really, <laughs> and photographing during this period between uh, 1976 and I don't know how many years later, and then returning again in the 80s where the country had uh, changed massively even within that period. And uh, prior to that 80s period, Japan wasn't really on many people's radar, it wasn't really somewhere that was known through the uh, you know scenes of movies like Blade Runner and so on and uh, you know, he kind of visited and saw that change where the the country and the city of Tokyo especially grew. And again, movie posters, uh, advertisements, television screens, there's a lot of reoccurring motifs here. But I don't want to spoil too much of the book for you as I try not to do normally with these things. And yeah, you know, there's reference to some of these old TV screens playing ads with, uh, you know, David Bowie, for example, doing an ad for whiskey or whatever it was something that was happening even back then. And um, if you're ever curious and you get the copy of the book, you can look up when and where the photo was taken, uh, if, you know, if he has an accurate reference to that. So for example, here's the, the index at the back. Cool, so yeah, a lot of uh, TV commercial type stuff, but also some of these quiet night scenes in in areas you wouldn't think to really go for a walk, but Japan being a very safe city, I can, un, you know, feel that sense of discovery and willingness to to go down these dark streets and and so on but yeah the color work in this book is beautiful uh, a lot of it being done on a tripod obviously gives it this sense of calm where the movement is in the subject rather than the camera yeah the great great one there that i think um is used to advertise the book as well. And then skipping ahead, because again, I don't wanna spoil it. There's a lot of pages, a lot of photos in this book. You actually jump to a section of black and white work where you see this photo again of the two schoolgirls and this transitional page here, which takes you into all the black and white work. So the black and white work is a bit heavier with portraits and sort of candid portraits, I guess you would call it, candid photos. Um, this person is in a few of the photos. I think she's named in the, the reference area here. I've forgotten the name. Let's find it. Keiko. So maybe she was a, I don't know, friend, acquaintance, girlfriend, who knows? And uh, some street portraits here some what looks like random encounters, maybe people he met or knew in Tokyo, and then obviously some more candid ones here. And yeah, I don't want to spoil the black and white section either, but that goes on for a little while. 
and the change from this like saturated uh nighttime black uh, color work to this to the black and white feels a bit sudden but it gives you that that variety and it kind of refreshes the the feeling when you're going through the book and you get this sudden change and then it goes back to color again after this black and white section so i'll just show you a couple more here from the black and white section yeah you're going to get a bit of that reflection but it's not too bad Is that Keiko again? Not sure. Yeah, and then another transitional page, which is really cool. Looks like one of those sort of airport um, things from the 80s or 70s. And back to color. And then so sort of you've got a TV screen here. You can see the little the dots from an old CRT TV. The printing quality is great. Obviously, you have a lot of these uh, full bleed double page spreads. And I know some people aren't a fan of that. I personally don't mind it. But there is one photo that I feel was a little bit compromised uh, by having been printed like that. Normally, you know, it's not so bad when you have the top, the subject of interest not being cut down the middle. But there was one particular photo that I think suffered a little bit because of that. And that was my only gripe with the printing of the book, which is otherwise fantastic. And um, yeah, I'm trying to find that photo. I'll see if I do on this first run. I mean, even this, for example, the way it's cut right down the mouth, I know that might have been an intentional choice, but I don't think it really works there. And uh with this one, for example, it's not so bad because, you know, it's not going through his eye or ear. But yeah, just as an example, this one kind of just gives the photo a different life than I think it should have had if it was printed across one page. But anyway, that's that's one thing I would say about the printing, which is otherwise great sequencing, color, black and white, all looks really good. All the full bleed pages look nice. Some of these um, with the negative space of the white page there look really good. And yeah, you finish off with that color section. You go to the index. Hey guys, thanks for joining if you're in the comments. I've seen a few comments, but I haven't replied to any, but there haven't been many. So Jackie, beautiful book. Yeah, really nice. Highly recommend it. There's a link in the description uh, for the uh, website listing on Greg Dry's website for this book. Thanks for joining anyone who's here. Uh, Joey, hey, thanks for joining. Love Greg's work, especially his work in Hong Kong. Yeah, I saw that book and wanted to get it a little while ago, but, you know, one at a time. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so again with the these more graphical pages, which is cool. This is the actual Japan Airlines logo, and I think this is the older one. Or well, this might be a photo of a poster, who knows? And then there's this great interview here, which I read, and it was actually quite uh, quite good in terms of the insight it gave into both Greg Gerard's thinking when traveling to Japan back and forth and living there, taking these photographs, comparing it to Japan in recent times, for example, and all the themes, the underlying uh, themes of Japan's changes that it's been going through over the last few decades, how, how you know, it's lost its more traditional ways according to some and, and whatever, but it's worth a read. It's not too long. And then you go to this index of the places, locations, times, uh, years, whatever. And then this one actually was a little bit of a surprise. When I was uh, getting to the end of the book, I was reading this section here and it had acknowledgements. I was like, oh, that's nice. So a lot of people they've acknowledged. And then I sort of felt the sense of familiarity, like oh, that's a lot of people. And I thought I might have recognized some of the names on there. And then to my surprise, I was like, wait, hold on. I thought, let's just look. Because I had started to get this feeling that maybe this was to do with the pre-order. And as I was starting to think that, I spotted my name. I spotted Hashem McAdam in the acknowledgements in the back of the book. And then I clicked at that same moment and realized, ah, oh, yeah, this was um, a pre-order uh bonus you know you get your name printed in the acknowledgements of the book for people who pre-ordered that early 
special edition and and I had completely forgotten. And and then I realized, right, that's awesome. How nice is it to have your name printed in, you know, the book of an artist that you really admire, whose work you really like, and to have forgotten about it and just see your name in the book in this like fantastic copy that uh, whether or not it's that different as a special edition, it's great to have. And yeah, bonus. So obviously, um, if you didn't pre-order it, I'm not sure if this would happen again, but there's a lot of people here. I can see who pre-ordered it. So yeah, like I, I, I know I recognize some of the names, you know, like Perry from Sydney, my friend Perry Carbonell. And yeah, it's a cool little touch. So that's Greg Gerard's JAL JAL 76 to 88 which is a book I would definitely recommend if you're interested in Greg Gerard's work or if this video piqued your interest. So that is uh, most of what I had for this live stream, but as usual, I'll probably sit here for a bit and uh, just chat to you guys for a while. How long has this been going? I can't see the timer on the, the screen that I currently have, but anyway. What I wanted to share also was um, the Link to the website, first of all, which I did mention. So I'll bring that up on screen as well, just so you can see it. But let's get rid of that and bring this up. So that's Greg Gerard's website. Feel free to jump on there, check out his other books, uh, familiarize yourself with his work. If you're not, and you're, you think this might be down your alley, I definitely am a fan of this type of photography, night photography especially, and great color work, quieter sort of, um, introspective scenes like this, hotel rooms, all that kind of stuff, especially when it's from uh, a different era. And then, sorry, I missed some of the comments. I left that hanging for a bit, but Charles Rich Jr., who's the publisher? Ooh, good question. Let's see. It might be on this website. Yeah, here we go, Komenek, Berlin. So I would assume it was printed in Berlin, which is quite common for a lot of photo books. And Jun Hans here. Hey man. City of Darkness is great. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I have a th have a third Greg Gerard book, but I haven't shared that on the channel. It was actually stuff from, from Vietnam called Hanoi Calling. So I know uh, of the City of Darkness one, that's definitely on my list as well. But I also have this here which is Hanoi Calling. This was pretty hard to get my hands on, but I got a, a decent deal on it. And this one is all uh, medium format work, which is really nice. I'm pretty sure it's mostly just like Mamiya 7 or something like that. Brilliant um, book, this one as well. So as you can see, I'm, I'm a fan of um, Greg Gerard's work, but yeah, definitely check out the other books on his website. And there's quite a few collections from different countries where he's traveled and lived for extended periods of time. So yeah, that's linked uh, in the description of this video if you want to check it out and get yourself a copy. So it's available. It's 68 US dollars and signed on request, which is a nice touch. You'll get the signature on this opening page. Uh, it's also available on other sites, but you can f find it wherever you want. It's probably best to buy it directly if you want to support the artist directly. I'm not sure if buying it from another site means that site gets a cut or not, but probably doesn't matter. Either way, you're supporting the artist and buying it. Uh, but yeah, there's other websites where I just did a Google search and I could find it, uh, which might be more appropriate. For example, if it's being sold in the same country where you live, this one is in euros. So it's somewhere in Europe, obviously, uh, but the price shouldn't vary too much. So yeah, th thanks for joining guys. If you just jumped on this, you can always go back and rewatch it. After I'm gonna leave this on the channel if you're interested. And yeah, hey Jay, how's it going? It is cool to have your name in this. And it's so, like the fact that I forgot and I saw my name, I was like, what the hell? And then I realized, yeah, they mentioned when pre-ordering, it was just a little thing that I, I forgot about because I was gonna pre-order the book anyway, uh, as in Sarah and I were wanting to pre-order the book anyway. But I, I did it in my name, obviously, so. Really good looking book. Yep. Hey, hey, Luke, how's it going, man? 
I'm good. I'm good. Feeling a little bit sniffly, but not too bad. Hey, Daniel. Thanks, man. I've been back for a bit, but it's good to be back. Got to figure out printer for my book. Yeah, yeah. It's tough figuring out um, where to print something, especially when you want to go beyond just that little kind of zine type thing. If you want to print an actual book, I'm sure it gets a lot harder because it costs you a lot more when you want to go with something like offset printing. And uh, hey, man, you mean, how's it going? You picked up Jal totally floored me. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be uh, pretty inspiring to you. The kind of work you like to shoot, I think, would definitely um, draw inspiration from people like Greg Gerard. Junhan, Hanoi Calling is great. Remember borrowing it from Unimelb Library? Oh, cool that they have a copy. Yeah, I should um, go and look for more photo books at libraries. I know that they have them. I just don't think to do it often. Phantom Shanghai, another one similar to Hanoi Calling. Yep. You have a favorite book that's signed? Yeah, I guess so. This is um, this is it. I really like um how Greg Gerard goes about putting out books and communicating with a lot of his fan base on Instagram. I think it's nice because a lot of the contemporary photographers or even in between, let's you know, you could say there might be an older generation photographer if they've been shooting since seventies or eighties. And I feel like Greg Dried kind of sits right there in the middle, kind of like you know your Alex Webb or someone like that who's still active these days but is also on Instagram uh, co communicating and connecting with a larger fan base than you otherwise would have if you were restricting yourself just to, you know, your website, which is fine as well. But I wouldn't have otherwise found out about this book, perhaps, and I definitely wouldn't have been able to pre-order a copy in time. So I think that's nice. And I think it's cool that he replies to comments and he does things like uh, the acknowledgement section of the book and the signing the copies when you order one. and. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, even replying to emails and, and stuff like that. It's really cool. And hey, Jen, thanks for joining. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit as well is on the topic of meetups. So Jun Han's here. He was at the last one. I did a little meetup here in Melbourne called Coffee and Cameras. It's something that I want to try and run regularly or semi-regularly, especially now in the colder months because it's a cool way to meet up without having to walk around in the cold too much with you know, Melbourne being pretty cold in the winter. And it's just something different to a photo walk because we've done photo walks and a lot of the time you end up just walking around and chatting anyway. You don't really get to take many photos and the photos you take are kind of portraits of each other, which is great. So we, I figured let's do one where we just sit somewhere, chill out, talk, uh, bring our cameras and drink coffee or whatever it is people wanted to bring, snacks and so on. So we did that a week ago roughly and uh, the weather wasn't great. It wasn't ideal. It was a bit wet and gloomy. And I had wanted to do it in the park on a nice sunny day and that didn't work out. But we still uh, went out. It wasn't raining, luckily. And uh, yeah, I think for the next one, it would be cool to do it just in a cafe. While, you know, Melbourne's weather is pretty unpredictable and uh, that aspect of meeting up in one spot was really good. We took some portraits of each other. I'll post some to Instagram soon. But the next one I want to do in early August. So if you're interested in uh, coming to that and you're in Melbourne, check out the Discord server. If you're not already a member, you can join with the invite link in the description of this video. If you are, hop on there, go on the Meetups channel. I'm trying to organize the date for the next one. It'll be sometime early August, most likely on a weekend because that's when most people tend to be free. And I'm gonna look at some cafes around Melbourne. I initially had my eye on uh, Caf Fanatics, which had this big table, which would have been great for about 10 people. But they, they don't open weekends because they're on the sort of far side of the city, but I'll find somewhere else. And uh, what I want to do for this next one is try and do a photo book sharing thing. So we bring some photo books that we like with us to this meetup, maybe just bring one each and then just share some books and also bring your own zines or your own book or your own prints or anything that you're working on. I think doing these meetups in person where you can share uh, work that inspires you or work that you're currently uh, working on and get some constructive criticism from other people in the form of uh, physical prints or even if you just bring it on your iPad, no big deal. And kind of get some, you know, community involvement with something that you want to work on and talk about film and cameras and whatever it is, just have fun, meet up and drink coffee. So that's what that was. Uh, and that's what I want to try and do maybe every month, see how long we can keep that up. Coffee and cameras. So, Luke, 
gutted you couldn't make it. Yeah, next time. So that's the reason why I want to try and do these regularly. Any chance of making it on a Sunday? I work Saturdays. Yeah, man, I think it will be on a Sunday. I think on the Discord, a couple of people were saying they work Saturdays or they can't make it on Saturdays. So I might be going snowboarding on one of the days in early August. One of the, But it probably wouldn't be a weekend because weekends are too crowded. So yeah, it might be Sunday, Sunday the 7th or something. I'm going to look at my calendar. Yeah, Sunday the 7th is the the top candidate at the moment, assuming I can run it on that day. I'll have to confirm. But if it's not that Sunday, it could be the next one. And yeah, we'll make it happen. So let me know. Jump on Discord and... I'll try and get some numbers, try and book a table at a cafe or something and we'll make it happen. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining on this. Uh, thanks for the support as usual. Sorry, I haven't been putting out as many videos as normal. I have a lot of footage and stuff that I you know, have ready to make content out of, but the big bottleneck for me is editing. Oh man, it's the worst thing about YouTube videos as you might know if you do any work because I'm not only editing or trying to edit videos for the channel, but I've got some client work that I'm doing. I have some photography jobs that, that pop up and I'm editing them. And I have a, a big video job that I did for a commercial, not huge, but to me, it was like, you know, it's going to involve at least a day of editing uh, and maybe more for, for a video job I did. So then when you want to edit videos for fun for YouTube, it's just adding onto that and it starts to feel overwhelming, but there's stuff coming. So there's videos from our trip still coming up. I'm currently going to be uh, putting working on the turkey videos, which I might have to split up into at least two. And then um, there'll be stuff from Lebanon and Italy and all the you know stuff that we did there. I won't be sharing all the photos because I want to save some and save the best ones for for a zine or maybe a book or something in the future. But I will be sharing a lot of favorites, a lot of the photos that I do like from our trip and some of Sarah's, hopefully if I can get my hands on some of her um, photos because she just developed all the film. So look out for that. If you're interested in seeing some of that, there'll be another video coming out about uh, Open Lab, which I've talked to a few people about and have all the footage for, but I'm just waiting on a couple of things for that one. And yeah, plenty more. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, again, if you're interested in under Vancouver, I didn't put the link for this, but you can search through and find it. And uh, yeah, one last thing is if you're in Melbourne also, I won't be here for it, but uh, Photographers Anonymous Sydney is putting together a photo walk. They normally do them in Sydney, obviously, because they're a Sydney-based group, but they're coming to Melbourne and they're doing kind of like a concurrent thing where there's a walk in Sydney and Melbourne, which is really cool. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. There's a link in the description towards the bottom of the, the links. and uh, it's on the 24th, 24th, let me scroll down here. You can RSVP, Sunday 24th of July. I'm gonna be in Canberra, unfortunately, so I can't come. I'm gonna be attending a wedding as a guest, not shooting it, and uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So get in touch with them or, or uh, with Jackie or whoever uh, from Photographers Anonymous Sydney. There's Follow this link, find the Instagram, find all the information you need for RSVP if you want to go to this one. It's going to be cool. And uh, they really put together great photo walks and events. So if you're interested in that, I will also share something on the Instagram story on Pushing Film. So thanks for joining. Hope you all have a good one. And I will uh, chat to you soon. Thanks, Luke. All right. See you later.